All right then, gang, so now we have our Shinobi CSS library pretty much complete. Might not be a heavyweight contender for CSS library of the year, but nevertheless, we've created it. And I want to show you how you might typically use this CSS library in your own projects. So what you typically do is open up your project directory in a text editor like VS Code or something else. And then you would drag in to that project directory the Shinobi folder, which contains all of the source files. Now, if you wanted to use it as is, all you need to do is create the gulp file like this and then watch the Shinobi folder and any SAS file inside it and then compile it. And then you could watch your HTML to rebuild it every time you used different classes so that we're purging out the unused ones. Now that's fine. But what if you wanted to extend the library or maybe customize it a little bit? What if you wanted to change the variables so that the primary color was different or the secondary color was different? Well, typically what you wouldn't do is go directly into the CSS library source and change those because you might end up breaking something. So instead, what you could do is you could create your own SAS folder right here and you could create a file inside that called index.scss, right? And then any customizations, any changes you want to make to the library, you could put inside here. Now that now we've done that, we need to, instead of watching the Shinobi folder, watch the SAS folder, because when we make changes here, then we want to recompile, right? So what we do is we change this to SAS like so, and that's going to look for any SAS file inside the SAS folder, and we can save this. Now we've changed this file, we need to rerun at gulp down here. So cancel out of the process and run gulp again. And when we do that, it's now going to try and compile this file right here where there's nothing inside it yet instead of what's inside the Shinobi. And it's still going to output to the same destination, our CSS. Now, if we open that at the minute, there's nothing inside it because there's nothing inside this file either. However, if we add some kind of test select in here, and give this a margin of 10 pixels. If I save it, it's going to recompile. It's still not going to show in here, remember, because we have that purge CSS going on. And because we're not using that class in our HTML over here, then it's not going to show up in the final CSS. However, if I add it in, test right here, it's going to recompile again. And if we take a look in the output file now, we can see it. All right, so that's fine. But then how do we bring in all of the library? Well, all we need to do is go over here and I'm going to come down here and say at import, and I want to import something from Shinobi like this. And what file do I want? I want the index file. Now, when we're importing the index file from a folder directly, we don't need to say forward slash index like so. If you just leave it as the folder, it's gonna automatically look for the index file directly inside that folder. So we don't need to say index explicitly. So now if I save this, it's going to look at that, it's going to recompile it based on the classes that we use right here, but it's now also going to include everything from Shinobi as well. So if we take a look in the index file now for the CSS, we can see all of the classes that we use, right? So this is how I might typically set it up in one of my personal projects. I'll create my own SAS source file and import Shinobi right here. Now, what if I want to override some of the classes or some of the variables rather? What if I want to make the primary color something else? For example, I could say primary, like here, is going to be red, right? That's the primary theme color. Now, what do you think is going to happen here? If I save it and come to the home page, you see the navbar primary right here. It should be red, right? Now, if we preview, mm -mm, it's not. It's blue still. So why isn't it updated that class? Well, it's because even though we've updated the primary color right here, if we take a look inside the Shinobi, it already has generated all of the navbar classes for us right here using the colors, right? So by the time we get down to where we change primary, it's already generated all of those different classes for us. So it's not gonna then generate them again after we've changed it because we import it up here. I hope that makes sense. Now, if that's the case, we should place it above here, right? So we could come up here and place it up there. And in fact, instead of red, let's change it to indigo just to make it a little nicer. All right, so if we save it now, is that gonna work? Well, if we preview in the browser, no, it's still not worked. 
And that's because we have our primary variable here, but then we import this, and inside the variables file, we override that, okay? So it was indigo before, but then when it reaches this, we override it. So how do we combat this? Because we can't now place it above the import or below it. Well, we do this using the default keyword in SAS. So if I add default in front, oops, in front of this or after the value rather, and I can do it after each one of these. Let me do it down here as well. Default and then default. What that means is, look, I want you to set this to be the value of the primary variable unless there's already one declared. Now, in our case, there is already one declared. The primary is declared right here. So by the time it reaches this, it's going to say, well, there's already a primary variable declared. So I'm not going to apply this new value. I'll just use the default one, which is already declared. And now, since that's the primary color, by the time it gets to the navbar component, the button component, and the colors um, file, it's going to generate the classes using our version of the primary variable. So if I was to preview this in a browser now, let me just come over here. I need to save this file and then go back over here and make a change to this so that it recompiles. I'm going to save it. Now, if we preview this in a browser, we can see we have that background color. So that's how we do it. We need to use the default keyword in our library for any variables that we might think that the user could override and customize. All right, so I could come down here and I could add default after each one of these. So let me do it. Let me just select all of these like this because these are all kind of global variables for our library and a user might want to change them. Oops, you need to spell this correctly, default. All right, so if I save this now, we can override some of the others as well. So beneath this, I could say, well, the base padding is gonna change. So we'll put that to be one rem. And before, if we take a look, the variables, the base padding was not 0.75, so it should be a bit more spaced out now. And also we'll do the base border thickness. So base hyphen border hyphen thickness, and we'll make that to be three pixels instead of one pixel. So if I save this now, it's going to automatically affect all of the other classes that we generate to use these values instead of the ones defined here because of this default keyword. And if we take a look at the home page in the browser, we can see the border, which is thicker, and it looks a little more spaced out. All right. So that's how we can allow users to customize the library using that default keyword.